Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Hutton's Valley Permaculture. The weather's turned pretty wet and cold outside today, so I thought I'd head in, put the fire on and do some spinning. Now I'm pretty new to spinning, but I am excited because I did manage to make enough yarn to make a small scarf. I've got lots to learn, but I thought today I'd just show you what I've learned so far in the process from turning fibre into yarn. Now this is not a how-to video, so I welcome any tips or tricks you'd like to share and please leave those down in the comments. Now these are the fibres I've got. I've got two alpacas. The first one is Dusky, who's a Wakaya alpaca. His coat is mostly a dark grey, but it does have a little bit of brown in it and also some white spots. Oppie has a really beautiful dark um, coat. He's a Suri alpaca. Now the two different types of alpaca, the fleeces do vary a little bit, but I'm still um, sort of learning about what that actually means in the world of spinning. These still need a good wash, so they're looking pretty filthy at this point. The other fleece I've got here is a, a woolen fleece, which I've got because you do need to blend it with alpacas for making any articles of clothing that you might like to hold their shape like jumpers or hats. If you were to make a scarf with 100% alpaca, that's okay because it doesn't matter if that drapes. With the alpaca, there's a lot of um, shortcuts in there, little pieces that you really just want to get out before going through the washing process. So you basically just go through, get the fibres out, um, get the good ones and sort of discard any of those small pieces and then um, get on to the washing process with that. With the woolen fleece, the first thing I do is just take a handful of the wool and take that off to the laundry and start getting it washed. Now first up, I'm just going to dunk this into some quite warm water and I'm going to leave it there for 20 minutes or so. I'm not agitating it so that it doesn't felt and I'm just going to do this a couple of times to get what lanolin I can out of it and then I'll use a wool wash. Now I suppose I'm just doing small batches at this stage because I'm still just learning and if you muck up just a small amount like this it's no big deal. It's been 20 minutes now and you can see the changing colour of the water. That's all the lanolin and some of the, the dirt that comes out. I'm going to drain that out and put that through this process again. I'm just going to take that outside and empty it because you don't want the lanolin in your pipes. Now I'll make sure I get the water in first and then I add in the wool so that you don't risk felting it. And then pop that in again. Now I just press down. I don't really swish it around at all. I'll leave that for another 20 minutes. Now this is alpaca that I have washed and I've got it on a little frame that I can just pop outside on a hot dry day or I can just sit this near the fire, not too close because I don't want it to, to warm up too much, but just enough so that this can dry. So I'll just move this off now and we'll get our wool onto the frame to start drying. See the water is a lot clearer than the last lot so we've got a lot of the lanolin out so I'll remove all of this carefully to give it support and once again I'll throw this water outside. Now I'm just going to put it in a little bit of a, a wool wash and I'll add that once my water's in and the temperature is still the same so it's quite warm. Now we don't really need suds so just add that, I'll swirl that round and then I'm just going to pop this wool back in again and leave it once more. So that's the wool all washed now. You can still see there's quite a bit of dirt that's come out of there. But I'll rinse it now and then we can get it dry. Once you're happy with your wool and it's all rinsed out, I'll just give it a, a gentle squeeze. I won't wring it. You do risk felting. And another reason why I just do it in small batches is that I dry it off in this little salad spinner. So I'll give it a bit of a spin there first. 
and that's dry enough to sit on my little frame there now. I've just set this frame off to the side of the fireplace so that it's it's still getting a little bit of warmth but not too hot and I'm just going to leave that there to dry out. I have sat it up a little bit with some um, sticks there and that should dry fairly quickly. Now just for a quick comparison, yellow is all the lanolin that's in the wool so we've really removed heaps of that. Now there might still be some little bits of vegetable matter or some little clumps like that but that comes out in the blending process. Next thing I need to do is the blending which means blending your wool with your alpaca. Now I am going to do um, two thirds alpaca and one third of the wool. So I'm going to weigh them out just to make sure that I've got the proportions right. So that's 20 gram of alpaca and 10 grams of the wool. Once I've got that weighed out, I do separate it out a bit further. I'll move it into sort of thirds just to keep the proportions right so that you're still ending up with approximately a third and two thirds. I'm not too fussed about how perfect it is because it's a, um, a really rough sort of yarn that I'm making. I'm not expert at it, so it's very rough at this point. So this doesn't matter too much. So once I've got my fibre all um, weighed out and the proportions right, I just kind of spread out the fibre on my little hand carter. Now I know I'm not sure about the, the right way to go about this bit at this point, but I'm kind of just sh shoving it on. I'm not even sure if it's all supposed to be in the same direction. And then I will go over the top with my alpaca. And then I'll start sort of blending it like this. So when I get it like that, I just kind of roll that off, usually hold it between my legs and that's about ready to go. My blending process needs a little work, it's not perfect yet. But I do eventually end up with a pile of fibre that I can take to the spinning wheel. I was lucky enough to be gifted this Ashford traditional spinning wheel by a family friend who was no longer in need of it. Now with your blended bat, you can start to feed it onto your spinning wheel and hopefully make some yarn. Now I'm not very um, consistent with my yarns at this point. They're very inconsistent, but I'm hoping with practice to be get better at that. I've been reading a book called Local is Our Future, which reminds me that we should be meeting our needs as locally as possible. Now most people would think immediately of food from farmers markets or growing veggies at home or in community gardens, and that's great. But we also need to think more locally for our clothing requirements as well. Now there's nothing more local than homegrown fibres processed into homemade clothing. So it's the next day and last night I did fill up this bobbin so that I could ply the wool. I've got a second bobbin here which I originally did which I'm going to ply with the uh, yarn that I made yesterday and you can see that this seems to be a bit finer than my original spin although it does vary right throughout the bobbin and by applying it, I think it will just um, make it a little bit more consistent across the whole yarn. The plying also gives it a bit more strength as well. I'll be making a two ply yarn today. So I've got my two single yarns um, onto this little device here called a, a Lazy Kate. And I've got a empty bobbin set up on my spinning wheel. So you feed your yarns off this and, and spin it onto this empty bobbin 
And in this case, we're going to have the spinning wheel spinning opposite so that the, the yarn is twisted the opposite way and then it holds together really well. Now it's taken a little bit of adjusting my wheel to get this going properly and uh, I think finally we're there. Oh, this is <laughs> it's very bumpy yarn. We're going to have a very rustic looking hat at the end of this, I think. But practice makes perfect, so they say. You can see it's coming along. And then there's some um, thicker bits. And there'll be some thinner bits as well. But um, that's all part of the fun. Now this is where any of you people out there who watch my videos and spin, and I know there's quite a few of you, please leave a comment at the end for any tips or tricks, because as you can see, I'm probably in need of them. Now that we've got that bobbin all full, I can transfer this onto what they call a nitty noddy and make a skein of wool. And with the, the rest of this single yarn, I will then transfer that onto the bobbin and ply that as well. It's a fairly rustic yarn. The consistency is all over the place, but my little hat is bound to match my very rustic scarf. Well, what is a nitty knotty? I hear you ask. Well, I've got a homemade one here, and basically it's just to allow you to wind the wool around. If you know the distance here, and it goes around four times, you can work out the yardage of the yarn that you've got. So I've got my bobbin down in a basket, and I'm just gonna wind this on. Hang on. It takes a little bit to get going, I find, with your nitty knotty. But basically, you kind of just keep going around and around until all your yarn's been transferred to your nitty knotty. Um, to the end, so I'm just going to cut that off. And now you just need to tie up your skein before removing it from the nitty knotty. I'm just going to make sure that that doesn't come undone because it needs to hold fairly firm for the, the next process. Once you've got your wool tied and it's not going to get all tangled when you take it off, you can remove it from your nitty knotty. These are removable little arms, so I can take that out and this all just comes off as one big circle of yarn. The next step I am going to do is wet finish it and thwack it, which helps to, um, I'm just hoping that it helps to strengthen my um, wool and so that um, it doesn't fall apart, but it does help to make it look less stringy. It, it makes it bloom and puffs it up a little bit. I've got some fairly warm water. I can still put my hand in it. I'm not agitating this at all. I'm just going to leave it in there for, you know, 20 minutes or so, just so that it can all get really wet. I'm just going to really carefully remove it from our still warm water. I'm not wringing it. I'm just giving it a gentle squeeze. Then I'm just going to pop it back in the spinner and give that a bit of a spin. Okay, there's a lot of the moisture out of there now. I'm going to take this and give it a bit of a thwack. Now to thwack the wool, you take your still wet yarn and you just kind of bash it on. I'm going to do it on a chair. And you just kind of turn it as you go. And that's the whole circle complete. Now I'm just going to let that dry. 
My washed wool from yesterday is dry. It sat next to the fire last night. So I'll just move that into my washed wool department and lay out this skein of wool on my little frame and that can dry on there. You can see how much it's kind of floofed up. Yeah, I'm not too sure that this is the uh, greatest yarn for knitting with, but um, I'm gonna make a hat and uh, see how we go. So to do that, I need to get it into a ball so I can knit from that. Just going to start by removing my little ties. Okay, so that's all my ties off. Now I just need to find that end again. Here's my end. And I'm just gonna start rolling it on my thumb. And as you roll, you kind of just twist the ball around. And you just keep going until you've used up all your yarn. It's very floofy yarn. There we go, one ball of beautiful yarn. Bit rustic, but I'm sure it'll make a great hat to complement my equally rustic scarf. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I'll leave a link to Gillian Eve's YouTube channel where I've learned a lot about spinning and I hope to learn a lot more. I'll also leave a link to Local Futures where you can learn a lot about the importance of localizing. I'm trying to localise my clothing requirements. However, I think it's going to take a lot more practice till I really get there. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.